So hi, hello, welcome again. Micro Hunter here and uh, today I want to talk a little bit uh, about the yes coronavirus and specifically why it's a little bit difficult to see it under the microscope or why it would be difficult to see it. There are a couple of the viewers who requested a video. I understand that not everyone was entirely serious about that of course um, but I think it's in any case an interesting thing to explore um, uh, concerning the size of the virus um, and uh, whether the microscope a light microscope is able to resolve it. Well the textbook answer is of course is that you're not able to see viruses uh, using a light microscope because the viruses are way too small and uh, they are below the resolution limit of what light is uh, able to resolve and therefore it's not possible to see them. However I think that this is a little bit uh, of a simplified answer because theoretically if the contrast were high enough you should be able to see even particles that are smaller than the resolution limit. And I want to explain this to you a little bit um, and uh, in order to do that um, I've actually prepared a little um, I don't know if this is well visible I prepared even a little how shall I say a little board here um, to explain this um, and uh, I would like to talk a little bit about and I think I'm going to move the other microscope a little bit on all of the way here about the resolution limit the numerical aperture and uh, yeah I'm going to try to keep uh, the math to a minimum basically the thing that you have to understand is that a microscope is a so-called a diffraction limited device and this means that uh, if you go up with the magnification too much then what you're going to see is, is you're going to see that the image becomes more and more blurry and uh, what I've uh, got here is the following I've got here two objects and these are the central dots here okay and when you uh, look at them uh, under the microscope what you're not going to see is you're not going to see the individual dots but you're going to see a fuzzy blurry area so this uh, dot itself will actually be represented by an area fuzzy area here um, and this one here as well and uh, you can see that uh, these two fuzzy areas here well they're called eerie discs okay um, these fuzzy the areas here are basically separated uh, they're far uh, apart um, and therefore I am still able to see them as uh, two separate objects okay so this means that the image here or at least these two dots here they are resolved okay so the important thing is is that these dots here the the objects here maybe the virus is uh, below the resolution limit okay uh, but uh, what I'm able to see I'm still able to see it because I see a fuzzy area okay and here down here um, a second example here the distance here is the same and here now the resolution is much lower and the fuzzy area the so-called the eerie disk is much larger and you see that they're overlapping here and therefore I'm not able to see it as two separate entities but as one fuzzy uh, spot so to say and the image is not resolved anymore and uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is, is that the, the, uh, the resolution is defined as the minimum distance that uh, you basically can have uh, and the objects are still visible as two separate objects okay um, and the point that I'm trying to make here is, is that of course you're able to see objects that are smaller than the resolution limit uh, under the condition that the contrast is sufficiently high okay um, but uh, where you're not able to see any details you're just going to see this fuzzy eerie disk for those of you who are maybe a little bit into astronomy there is a, a similar issue um, is, is that if you use telescopes that magnify a lot uh, and then you look at a star and then you might actually see the star as a disk and then you might say wow cool my, my telescope magnifies so much that I'm even able to see the star as a disk I'm able to see the surface of the star well uh, sorry to disappoint you actually you're just seeing an eerie disk, a diffraction pattern for that okay and uh, down here I've got a formula even so how can you actually calculate the resolution now and forget about the formula itself I think the more important things are the two variables that actually go into the formula one of them is, a, is the numerical aperture of the objective and this numerical aperture is actually printed on the objective so actually I have two examples here so this one over here is a, has a 0 0.65 printed on it I think I'm just going to magnify it a little bit more now okay 0.65 that's the numerical aperture and uh, my oil immersion objective that I have here um, has a numerical aperture of uh, 1.3 okay so it's even above 1 yeah, 1.3 um, and uh, when you uh, put the number in here um, into the formula and lambda that's the wavelength of course white light has a whole range of wavelengths so I'm just using green light now 540 nanometers then I'll get the result the resolution limit is 197 nanometers 
um, so around 200 nanometers. A virus, however, or let's say the coronavirus, has a diameter of 100 nanometers. Uh, so the resolution here is, is actually, uh, of the maximum resolution of this objective here is actually, uh, it's uh, twice uh, um, as bad as, as what you need for to resolve the coronavirus, okay? Um, so, but you still probably would be able to see the virus provided that the contrast is good enough as a fuzzy spot, okay? So what I've got here now on the other, on the other uh, side here is this is a public domain picture I got from Wikipedia of uh, the virus, the coronavirus. Maybe it's not the one that's currently uh, causing problems, um, but uh, there are several uh, uh, strains of coronaviruses around anyway. Um, but what you see here is that uh, not only are they quite well resolved, but you can also see some of the surface proteins, okay, here. And the reason why it's able to be seen here is, is because this is an electron micrograph. So um, uh, electrons have a much higher, uh, a much shorter wavelength, and therefore you're able to, to see the details much more. If I were to basically put this virus under my light microscope, I'd, I'd see a fuzzy area, which is, uh, huge okay uh, provided again i uh, know i'm repeating myself that the contrast is high enough okay so this is kind of the the, the thing uh, so are you able to see a virus under the light microscope the answer is well hmm, uh, yeah probably you're going to see that something is there uh, but you're probably not going to see any of you you're of course not going to be able to see any details and uh, just to um, illustrate this a little bit is um, the whole thing that you are able to see uh, structures below the resolution limit. If you, for example, use dark field microscopy, you have a dark field patch stop that you insert into your uh, condenser filter holder. And uh, what this does is um, it allows uh, you to see specimens bright on a dark background. So the contrast is really high. And what's gonna happen is, is if you put this in is that you're gonna see a lot of uh, things light up in your field of view. Um, all of the small dust particles that you would normally not see all of a sudden start to appear and even those that are below the resolution limit okay so but uh, you're just able to see a fuzzy uh, dot somewhere and it is a microscopic dust dot spot which might be even too, way too small to be properly seen um, otherwise and in bright field when you use bright field then the contrast is simply too low and you're still not able to and you're not able to see those structures in the first place and so you can you know, dark field that's one of those examples where you can also see structures that are smaller than the resolution uh, li limit um, and uh, as you probably know well, not probably know you, you see that I have for example glasses I have to wear glasses um, if I look at a distance object at night uh, I don't know, a lamp somewhere in the distance distance and if I take my glasses off I'll, I'm still able to see the lamp okay but it's gonna be a fuzzy spot yeah um, so I'm not able to resolve this and the si a similar thing is, is of course the case with the microscope is there any way that you can make now a virus visible using a, a light microscope well um, you could theoretically use uh, fluorescent antibodies to label the virus but even then you're just able to see a, a fuzzy spot uh, there that would be one possibility um, and another thing is is um, if I were to put a virus um, on the slide I'd have to know exactly where the virus is in order to actually be able to see it because I would not be able to distinguish it from any other dirt and dust uh, because it's just gonna cause just like the other things just a regular diffraction pattern and I'm not able to see any structural details so I think uh, I think that should be enough for today. Uh, wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as always. Leave your comments behind, please. Um, if you have any further questions, um, yeah, please also subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And see you around next time. Happy micro hunting, of course. See you around. Bye bye.